Merry Christmas. Uh, we uh, remember at this time of year certain passages from Scripture, and so I want to begin with one uh, that reads, Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. And then the angel departed from her. A great blessing embedded in our liturgical tradition is that we are afforded the privilege of hearing the same story proclaimed year after year. Mary's words to the angel Gabriel are familiar. Let it be with me according to your word. Or as the popular song puts it, Mary said, yes. Mary's yes to the angel, Mary's yes to God is by now a familiar story. The problem with being so familiar with the Christmas story is that it ceases to shock us. We no longer feel the scandal of God asking an unwed teen to bear the Christ in her womb. We forget that Mary paid a price in saying yes as she bore the reproach and suspicion of her community. We lose sight of the radical trust required of Joseph to say yes to God in his own unique way. Amidst the most surprising and unexpected of circumstances, Mary and Joseph made space for Christ to grow in their hearts, in their homes, and in their community. They offered a wholehearted yes to God's invitation to participate in the redemption of the world as they welcomed the Christ into their own lives. The radical nature of their yes stands in stark contrast to what we see displayed in Zechariah when Gabriel invited Zechariah to participate in God's redemption of the world. Zechariah the priest doubted the angel's words. Zechariah became mute and he was unable to speak until the angel's words came to pass. The same invitation that God issued to Mary, to Joseph, and Zechariah, God issues to you and to me. How will we respond when we lack the faith to offer our own unique yes to God's work of redeeming the world through unlikely people and un in unlikely places, places like Zechariah, we, we become mute. We may speak and string sentences together, but in truth, we have nothing meaningful to say. Only, only when we trust God enough to welcome the Christ, to make space for the Son of God to be born in our hearts, in our homes, in our community, and especially in people and places that our society might be too quick to call godless. Only then is our tongue loosed as we embody and proclaim good news to the world. During this Christmas season, I invite you to make space for the Christ. Look for Christ to be born amidst the most surprising and unexpected of circumstances. Ponder the significance of the priest getting God wrong and the unwed teenage girl getting God right. Do not let your familiarity with this story keep you from seeing the beautiful and outrageously wonderful scandal that Christmas was, is, and forever shall be. Merry Christmas to you.